Good morning. So our project is the Student Success Toolbox for Flexible Learners Supporting Transitions from Thinking About Study to the First Weeks. So the objective of our project is to produce a toolbox of eight digital tools that will address the needs of flexible learners during the early stages of the study life cycle. And we want to make these eight tools available to all Irish higher education institutions. So who are the flexible learners? So for the purpose of our project, we have defined them as adult learners engaged in part-time, online, or distance education at undergraduate level. So they're typically juggling work, study, and family commitments. And so they encounter a combination of issues during the early stages of the study life cycle. While their participation is increasing in higher education, a high percentage of first time of those embarking on higher education for the first time will fail to make effective transitions. And this is a, a significant problem, uh, both globally and within the Irish context. So there is a major problem with completion and retention rates. So we want our tools to address the issues they experience during the early stages of the study life cycle, and we want to build their resilience so they will successfully transition and progress with their studies. So we've divided our project into five phases. So the first phase is the setup. So uh, that was formalizing the team members uh, from each partner institution and just to uh, I think there are most somebody's from here from every single one of them. So it's uh, Maynooth University, Dundalk Institute of Technology, Institute of Technology Sligo, and ourselves at DCU. So um, it's been coordinated by DCU and led by James. So we use Google Docs to share our project documents, and we use uh, Google Hangouts for virtual um, meetings. And they're also just involved in the signing and uh, setup of the mem memorandums of agreement. The second phase of our project is the analysis of the literature review. So we looked at two topics, flexible learners and digital tools to support flexible learners in the early stages of the study life cycle. And the findings of the literature review guided the eight, the eight tools that we have chosen to develop. Phases one and two are complete, and we're now in phase three where we're creating the eight tools. The fourth phase will be the evaluation of the tools, and we will uh, have pilot evaluations across our partner institutions. In the fifth and final phase of the project, we will produce a guide on the digital tools, and that will detail how institutions can deploy the tools at their, in their settings. We will also deliver three workshops at three different higher education institutes, institutions, and we will make the tools available via Creative Commons license. I'm going to hand you over to James for the rest of the presentation. So, uh Looking at some of the, the outcomes that the project uh, has achieved, um, we have created a, a project website um, from where we are, going to, we are promoting uh, the project, disseminating information relating to the project, such as its outcomes, uh, events where the project is going to be uh, discussed, and eventually this is where people will go um, to access the tools. Um, for us, the, the biggest outcome we output we have so far is uh, the, the work that was done during phase two. Um, phase two of the project has produced a, a targeted analysis of the ex existing literature and an analysis of the existing tools available internationally that are uh, put out there to support flexible learners transition into higher education. Um, these outputs, the documents relating to these outputs, are, we're going to release those uh, through the project website in July. Um, the, the analysis of the literature uh, was carried out by uh, a really good researcher, Kira Galvin, who worked under my direction but with input from all the project partners. Um, the analysis of, uh, that analysis of the literature was underpinned by uh, a systematic review methodology and the way in which the analysis was targeted was that it, it focused on literature uh, since 2005 in English, uh, in full text, or available through, from full text international journals, um, using identified keywords and databases, uh, or where information was freely available online. There was, there was a little more to it than that. There was a, a follow-on of asking, asking uh, for expert opinion on where we should look, sort of uh, citation tracking, you know, building up a, a, a body of literature to look at. Um, 
The analysis of the existing tools then involves uh, an intensive review of the website of 22 leading flexible learning uh, institutions in four regions. Given that we, we don't have enough time today to go into a great deal of detail about the, the find, what we found uh, in that analysis of the literature, given it's about a 45, a 45 page uh, document, but we wanted to try and pick out some of the key points that came through in that phase two analysis. Um, the, the key questions that drove uh, the analysis are, who are flexible learners? Uh, what do we know about student success? And how does what we know about supporting transitions relate to those first two questions? Um, a strength of this analysis is that it, it showed that there isn't that much literature specifically focusing on what tools are being used to support flexible learner transition into higher education. And our analysis of the literature can now go towards starting to try and plug that gap. Um, a finding uh, where, where literature was found uh, relating to tools that are being used in this way, it, it uh, often tended to uh, focus on initiatives within single institutions. Um, the analysis found that the literature that is there doesn't match up that well to, um, to the range of tools that you find are actually being used in institutions. So there's a mismatch there between the literature and what you find when you look at uh, institutional uh, websites. Um, the analysis supported the idea that uh, during transitions, during flexible learners transitions into higher education, um, institutions should encourage engagement from the students and try and foster a, a sense of belonging in the students, and that this should happen as early as possible uh, in the study life cycle. Um, support was also found in the analysis of the literature for the idea that interventions uh, should be strategic and should be targeted uh, in their intended outcomes. Um, the analysis of the existing tools that are out there then, this was created as a, a, a sort of a database in a spreadsheet. Um, the tools were then coded thematically and clustered into groups based sort of primarily on their main function. Um, these clusters were then linked back to what was found in the literature uh, and the combination of these two threads was then used to make a, a potential list of tools that could be developed in the project. Uh, that list was then reviewed in terms of the, the aims of the project, the time frame involved and out of this process uh, the A tools that are now being developed uh, were chosen. So uh, these are eight tools um, which are currently being developed using a, a design-based research approach. The tools are being built so that any uh, program team or institution can take what we make and uh, adapt them to their needs. Um, the development of the tools is also learner-centered. Um, we are placing the tools in uh, the world of the learner. Um, uh, both in terms of the type of tools that we are creating and also in terms of the, the language use within those tools. That has to be uh, in terms that the, the learner can engage with. Um, so just to briefly go through what these tools, uh, what these tools will do. The first tool is a, is a readiness for study self-assessment quiz that will help uh, prospective uh, flexible learners to decide if they are ready for study at higher, in higher education. The second tool is a, a workload calculator that will help uh, prospective flexible learners to figure out do they currently have the capacity uh, in their lives uh, for studying and to try and gain an appreciation of the amount of time that will be involved uh, in studying at higher, in higher education. Um, the, the third tool will help learners to see what support networks are available to them uh, in their lives as they study in higher education. For example, uh, if they are having difficulties with technology, is there someone in their family who can help them out with that? Um, the fourth tool uh, allows students to assess whether or not they have the basic computer skills needed uh, to undertake study, especially if it's, if it's off-campus study. 
um, and direct them to uh, appropriate resources and supports where they find that they do not yet have the, the, the required skills. The fifth tool raises uh, learner awareness to the importance of uh, study skills, of information literacy, and also of the, the key role that the library um, has to play in the life of a flexible learner. The sixth tool is a, a short pre-induction pre socialization course that will give those getting ready uh, to study as flexible learners the information and advice they need about how to proactively prepare for studying. Um, the seventh tool allows for flexible learners to go to an online location where they can find study tips and advice uh, that have been put there by other existing uh, flexible learners, so, so to learn from those that have come before them. Um, and finally, the eighth tool uh, is an online orientation for flexible learners, um, targeted at the point of entry into the first academic year, uh, that will reduce entry shock for learners, orientate the, the learners to the institution, inform them of their rights and their responsibilities, etc. the things that you really want to get done on day one um, with new learners. So there, these are the eight to tools currently uh, under development. Um, moving on to impact, as, as part of the project's impact evaluation strategy, we are using the evaluation framework for teaching and learning projects, uh, which is used at a, a national level in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, this framework focuses on four dimensions of impact, uh, reach, impact on teaching practice, each impact on learners, and impact on the project team itself. Um, also as part of our impact evaluation strategy, uh, we have an international advisor who's acting as a, an external um, expert advisor for us on the project, and that person is uh, Professor Terry Anderson, who's uh, a recognized uh, expert in the area of flexible learning. Um, Professor Anderson is the editor of the International Review of uh, Research in Open and Distance uh, Learning, and is the author of uh, a recent textbook theory and practice of uh, online learning. Um, Three minutes. Yep. Uh, in terms of the, the the three benefits that we see uh, for this project, uh, the first benefit is that at the end of the project there will be a, a suite of openly available tools um, informed by the the analysis that we've done in phase two. Uh, that any, any institution or program team will be able to take, adapt, finish off to their, to their needs and, and use with their flexible learners. This benefit is linked to the research uh, or to the reach dimension of impact um, in that we are and will be disseminating the, the outputs of this project. We've already presented on the project at national and international conferences and we will continue to do so. Um, and at the latter stages of the project we will be uh, we will be uh, holding three workshops in different uh, higher education institutions relating to the tools and how they can be used, uh, how can they be effectively deployed. Um, this benefit also links to the teaching practice dimension of impact in that those who use these digital tools with learners will be enhancing their experience and their skills and competencies in this area. Um, the second benefit is that where these tools are used effectively with flexible learners, uh, it will, it, it will have a, a positive impact on flexible learning transition into higher education. Um, this benefit obviously links with the impact on learners dimension of impact where these tools are utilised, uh, flexible learners will have an easier transition into higher education. Um, the third benefit is linked to both the impact on teaching practice and the impact on learners linking to both the theme of transitions and to that of building digital capacity where these tools are, are if used effectively by teachers with learners, uh, this project has the potential to aid in the fostering of a culture that fully embraces digital learning and digital innovation. Um, so uh, thank you for listening to us for 15 minutes and also from the full project team, only three of which aren't, aren't in the room, um, thank you to the National Forum for the opportunity to do this work. Thanks very much, Nuda and James.